Hiya, it's Kitty Kaboom. You ever go to the pharmacy and look at all the racks and think to yourself, dang, that's a lot of pills. Pills for stamina, pills for sleep, pills for aches, pains, weight loss, weight gain, erectile dysfunction, even pills for people who are addicted to pills. In fact, there are so many types of pills that we had to make this a three part series. Part one, there's a pill for that. Part two, there's a pill for that. And part three, there's a pill for that. Welcome to Recovery TV's original series, Reality Check. Okay, don't get me wrong, pills are great, until they're not. Pills go back like a gazillion years. The ancient Assyrians and Egyptians made all kinds of pills by rolling up curative herbs into little balls of bread to be swallowed. In 500 BC, medicine men and women even had their own little trademark indented into each pill. I guess to protect their intellectual property. And behold, Big Pharma was born. Then in the middle of the 19th century, a genius named Louis Pasteur realized that diseases were caused by germs and he developed the first vaccines. Antibacterial and antiviral pills soon followed. People were safe now. The miracle of progress. Until uppity rich housewives got the stupid idea not to vaccinate their kids. Don't. Cut to the late 19th century, when a German dude named Felix Hoffman invented aspirin. It was synthesized from willow bark, which had been used to treat pain and fever since the time of Egyptians. I did not know that. Anyway, the pill industry took off from there, and in the 60s and 70s, pharmaceutical companies created acetaminophen, ibuprofen, and people got used to the idea of pills being able to treat fever, rheumatism, arthritis, inflammation, constipation, you name it, there's a pill to fix it. Most important, pills can help with pain, which is the topic of part two, so stay tuned for that. Doctors also discovered a class of pills that could help people sleep, barbiturates. First came phenobarbital, which begat Amobarbital, which begat Sacobarbital, which begat. Oh, sorry, sorry, I nodded off. Anyway, you get the picture, right? Sure, these drugs, they did help a lot of people sleep, but they also created a lot of addicts and killed nice people like Marilyn Monroe, Jimi Hendrix, and the King of Pop. Ironically, barbiturates even killed the two doctors who invented barbiturates. Yeah, that is ironic. Next came another class of drugs to treat another problem. Anxiety. They were called GABA A agonists or benzos. They were supposed to be safer and less addictive. Not. Which is not to understate the problem of anxiety. It's the sixth leading cause of disability across the globe. Panic, phobias, PTSD, OCD. Thank God they're medications to help people with anxiety when taken as prescribed. Not soon after benzos took off, doctors also realized that pills could also help with anxiety's evil stepchild, depression, which is the topic of episode three of this three-part series. So stay tuned for that as well. Bottom line, I ask myself, which came first? The problems pills were supposed to cure or the cures before the problems? Were there really billions of people in pain, sleepless, anxious, and depressed that we just never knew about? Or do we know about them now that pharma created the cure? Hmm. We'll never know the answer to that question. Main thing is, if a drug helps you, truly helps you, and you don't abuse it or use it for recreation instead of its intended medical use, then pills are awesome. And thank you, science, for inventing them. Thanks to chemistry, the drug genie is out of the bottle. And what we do or don't do with it is up to us. Come back soon, because episode two of our three-part series about pills is coming up here on Recovery TV's Reality Check. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more great recovery related content. I'm Kitty and this is Recovery TV's Reality Check.